everyone, just wanted to take a minute to talk a little bit about proofs involving isosceles triangles or proofs that are specifically showing something as isosceles. Um, and these kind of come down to two very particular, well, I should say one theorem and its converse. So the isosceles triangle theorem um, is just stating that if you have a triangle with two legs that are congruent, two sides that are congruent, then the angles opposite are also congruent. So what does that look like? If you had a triangle and I knew that this side and this side were congruent, that would mean that these two angles would be congruent. All right, and this is also an isosceles triangle, which is why they are calling this the isosceles triangle theorem, right? Isosceles just means um, at least two legs are the same. Um, in particular, these two sides are called legs, and then these two angles down here, the congruent ones, these are called base angles. This one up here, the one that would be different, um, or potentially the same if it's the equilateral triangle, um, is called the vertex, and this is the base. All right, so this is the base, these are the legs, and these will be the base angles. All right, so let's go over a proof involving that. What do we have? Well, we have CA, side CA, this whole side over here, is congruent to side CE, so that whole thing over there. And we also have that BA is congruent to DE. All right. So these are important things to keep uh, note of. And what are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that BX is congruent to DX. So that's our goal. All right, well, let's go through these steps. Um, this is a bit of a toughie, but we'll be fine. So let's go through it, statements. And then reasons. Okay, so what are we given? Let's write that down. So we're given that CA is congruent to CE, and that BA is congruent to DE. And that is what is given. All right, well, we know that this whole thing up here, right, of this whole triangle, we know that um, CA and CE are congruent. And from the isosceles triangle theorem, that also must mean that these two base angles, um, CAE and CEA, are also congruent. So let me just write that down. So angle CAE is congruent to angle um, CEA. And that is the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, so what does that tell us now? Let me just clean this up a little bit. So we know that, um, well, we know that these two sides are congruent and the little parts down here, we have that two base angles are congruent. So, well, what can we, what else can we do? You know what? Let's say that this base is congruent to itself, right? A, E, because somehow we have to get these. And when we have to do something like that, that indicates to me that I have to somehow get these two smaller triangles. But in order to do that, I probably am going to need some other information because I don't, I only have one component of these two small triangles. Uh, so let's just go through this step and let's see if this helps us. All right, so we've now gotten that this is congruent to itself, which is fine. That's the reflexive property. Okay, so what do we know now? Let's clean this up. Okay, so I don't really care about those things up there right now. I just want to point a couple things out. So we have that this base is congruent to itself, which is fine. We have these two base angles are congruent, okay. Then we have that these two sides are congruent. Um, so that does mean that I know that 
I do know now that the this triangle in the purple and this one in the blue, they are congruent. Is it super helpful yet? Maybe, maybe not. But let's go through it and let's see if it helps us. So what can I say? I can say that triangle B, A, E is congruent to triangle B, A, E, so that'd be D, E, A. And well, how did I do that? Let's recap what I knew. I had an, a side, an angle, and a side. So side, angle, side. Okay. So what does this give us? Well, let's see. Let's think back here. Think about what we need. My goal is to get this. Okay. Usually when you need something like that, you're probably going to need... Um, these two smaller triangles over here to be congruent. And I already know that that is going to be congruent. Okay, so, well, what can I get now? Well, I can get these two angles. I can get some angles in that from CPCTC. So I can say angle A, B, E is congruent to angle E, D, A, C, D, C, T, C. Okay, so let's look at this now. All right, so what do I now know? I now have this, I have that. I have that, I have those. All right, well, the sides might be a little bit tough, However, we don't need another side, right? Obviously, well, we, if we knew how to get BX, we would have already gotten BX. However, we can't get another angle for those two smaller triangles, all right? We can't get another angle. And we can get that angle by looking in here and going, oh yeah, these are vertical angles. Okay, so those are vertical angles. So let's go through that. So that would mean angle A, X, B is congruent to angle EXD, and that is from vertical angles. Vertical angle theorem. I'm too lazy to write that out. So now what do I know? Well, I have a side, an angle, and an angle. A side, an angle, and an angle. So an angle, angle, side. So I can prove that those two triangles are congruent. Triangle AXB is congruent to triangle EXD by angle, angle, side. All right. Now, last thing I need to do, I've just proven that these two smaller triangles are congruent to each other. So how do I get BX and DX? Well, easy enough, another CPCTC. All right. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this one's tough. Um, it does require a couple different things, but I think it's totally doable. So um, do your best with things like this. Uh, C, P, C, T, C. And just try things. Write down what you know. You probably could have written this down way sooner. You didn't need to, but you could, right? I mean, you could have just looked at that and said, well, there's vertical angles. All right, moving on. Um, but ultimately, uh, this is something that does use the isosceles triangle theorem, and it does help you out um, to ultimately get that these two parts are congruent. All right, let's go through another one. I have, well, I'm told right off the bat, it's isosceles, how nice. Okay, so statements. Uh, so I'm told that this triangle, E, B, C, we know that that one's isosceles, and then this is the base. Uh, we're also told that A, B 
and CD are congruent. So statements, reasons. All right, let's start with our statements. So triangle EBC, isos, and then AB is congruent to segment CD. These are given. Okay. Well, what does it mean for them to be an isosceles triangle? It means that these two sides are congruent. Okay. So that does mean that BE is congruent um, to what? EC or CE. Okay. Uh, that's just what it means to be isosceles. Okay. Now, I can use my isosceles triangle theorem to then say that angle EBC is congruent to triangle uh, ECB. Right, whenever you see that something is an isosceles triangle, you're going to use the isosceles triangle theorem. That should be pretty straightforward and pretty much a given. Um, all right, so that is our isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, so now what do we know? By the way, what am I trying to prove? Let's look. So I'm trying to prove that AE is congruent to ED. And I know a lot of different things. Well, if I could prove that these two outer triangles were congruent, that would be simple enough. Um, but do I directly know that yet? No. However, we can get there pretty easily. And one of the ways that we can get there comes down to the angles, right? Um, so what do we know? We know that these two are congruent. We know that these two are congruent. We know that A, B, and C, D are congruent. Oops. Two. All right, so well, what do I know about these two angles? Well, clearly they're gonna end up being congruent. Now, how do I actually go about saying that? Well, we have to start off with our personal favorite that they are a linear pair, and because they're a linear pair, they're supplementary, all right? So angle A, B, E, angle E, B, C are a linear pair, All right, and then similarly, we would know that angle D, C, E, and angle E, C, D, they're also a linear pair, and that just comes down to what it means to be a linear pair. All right, so because they are a linear pair, So we would know that angle A, B, E, and angle E, B, L, and then similar D, C, E, angle E, C, B, these are supplements, okay? So this one's a set of supplements, that one's a set of supplements. Okay, and that's just our supplements theorem, right? Linear pairs, are supplementary. Um, if you use one of the delta math answers of you know linear pairs or supplementary, you could have combined these steps. Um, I'm just going through and making sure we're clear on it. Now, your personal favorite, right? We have things that are both supplementary to angles that are congruent. So this is ultimately going to be our congruent supplements theorem. So that does mean I can get that angle A, B, E and angle D, C, E are congruent. All right, angle D, C, E, that is our 
congruent supplements. Yeah, that's the thing where, and remember in Delta Math, it was saying if two things are congruent or are supplemental, supplementary to um, the same or congruent angles, then they are also congruent. All right, so what do we have now? Now we can say that the triangles A, B, E, and triangle D, C, E, we can say that they are congruent. Why? Well, what do we have? A side, an angle, and a side. All right, now I've almost run out of room. But ultimately, eight. I can finish off my proof by saying AE is congruent to ED, and we are ending it off with ACPCTC. All right. Now, you're probably looking at those and going, oh, this looks like it's going to be really annoying. To be honest, I did two of the hardest proofs that you would probably see in regards to uh, my class of triangles at this point in your geometric careers. Uh, so don't anticipate them being this hard. This is me going through literally all the steps um, and picking particularly difficult problems. So you will be perfectly fine and are totally capable of doing this. Let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.